Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have it here today. We can borrow yeah. from like the TikTokers, and now yeah. we're going to show you a picture of it here. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on guys? Waco and Jeremiah Chan from Revolution and we're back, but this time we're, we're wearing- dressed slightly differently. Exactly, we've got our watchmaking coats Yeah, on. we get to be uh, Patek Philippe watchmakers we even, for we a day, we or even, 15 minutes. Yeah, we even have our loops <laughs> around our necks. Yeah. Can you actually put the loop in, into your eye like and just hold it there with, with your eye? No, I'm not. Yeah, some watchmakers can, but- It's I incredible. Like when Francois Paul Jordan does that, yeah. you know, I, I have no idea how he does that. Okay, so guys, uh, we're wearing these coats because it's time to talk about complicated watches. So the first watch we're gonna talk about, we're gonna show you images of because we don't physically have it here with us today, but it is the 5373, which mm -hmm. is an extraordinary split second chronographic perpetual calendar, yes. ultra thin, but with a left hand orientation. And I think the thinnest in the world, right? Well, so the uh, split second uh, uh, caliber is uh, was introduced in the 5959 by Paddock. Yes. It is based on an old Victorian uh, Piguet Ebosch. Ebosch yeah. And at the time it was launched, and I still think today it was the thinnest manual wide split second chronograph caliber available in the world. So that forms the base of this, coupled with the uh, perpetual calendar module, it is a watch of um, incredible refinement and real slimness as well. Right. This is a pretty extraordinary watch. There is in the Paddock Museum a left-handed split-second chronograph. Um, mm -hmm. This is, of course, a split-second ca uh, chronograph perpetual calendar, which is a pretty extraordinary high complication. Right. It is executed in a way that is really intriguing to me. So yes, you've got the crown and the pusher integrated into the crown at 9 o'clock, and you've got the second pusher to split the watch at 8 o'clock this time, and then the dial orientation has basically been flipped. So you right. have the moon face on the bottom, and all the other information has been kind of like reoriented based on that. It's got a really cool case in platinum where only just the top edge of the bezel has been polished and the rest is brushed. And then it's fitted to this very sporty looking strap that's got like this red top stitching as well. Now, Jeremiah, do you have to be left-handed to own this watch? No, you don't. I mean, uh, we talk about the uh, left-hand drive watches, you know, from other brands, but uh, most people just wear it on their left wrist as well. Right? Exactly. Well, I guess it allows you for double wristing when you're right. showing up Correct. To, you Correct. know, those paddock events. Yeah. Right? like rocking it with two paddocks. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one last touch uh, that I find very entertaining about this watch. What is that, Jeremiah? Earlier you talked about the 5373 and all the sub-dials uh, on, the, on the dial have been flipped, like a mirror image. But there's a, a small detail where you know platinum watches from Patek Philippe have a small diamond at 6 o'clock, but that has also been transferred to 12 o'clock as well. I love that. Actually, but then people will be able to tell. Yes, yes. <laughs> if you know, you know. It's an, ex it's an extra for its watch. Right. So we're going to go from there to uh, a watch that I think is absolutely magnificent. It is the 5935, and mm. that is the World Time Chronograph. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have it here today. We can borrow yeah. from like the TikTokers, and now yeah. we're going to show you a picture of it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is executed in a steel case. Oh my goodness. And with a rose opaline, as Patek calls it, dial with a carbon fiber texture that's reminiscent of the watch that they created for only watch right right and it is magnificent to behold you have to say it's an absolutely incredible watch and now we're going to go to two more watches we're going to start with the 5204 split second chronograph in white perpetual gold. calendar in white gold with this stunning olive green dial right and early in the year there was a 5270 that launched with an emerald green and that was you know more vibrant and shinier but you know this olive green is just it's just cool yeah, I think this is a, the olive green now has become something of a, uh, you know, like signature for Paddock as yeah. well, especially since it launched the 5711 uh, mm. last year with that olive green tone to it. Right. And it is a pretty damn stunning watch. I mean, what I love about this watch also is that the base movement is the CH29 525, mm -hmm. which is optimized from the very beginning to be able to have a split second function on it as well. It is to me one of the greatest chronograph movements in the world also because it's got a precise jumping minute counter and it's four hertz, which is really nice to have yeah. in a manual line chronograph um, because it is one of the movements that are made in the modern era and not you know, being borrowed from the 1940s. Correct. Right? Correct. So we're gonna go from there to the Aquanaut Luce Chronograph. Yes. And I'm going to give that to you, right. Jeremiah, and walk <laughs> us through that watch. Well, here we have a, a mother of pearl dial, but uh, as well as uh, 40 or 80, rather, uh, jewels that are set into the bezel. And on the outer rib, uh, we have uh, 40 uh, colored sapphires, right? In, uh, and in the inner part of the bezel, there are an additional 40 baguette set diamonds. And if I'm not mistaken, Jeremiah, there's six different shapes to those those stones as well because of the corners, right? Yes, the corners of the Aquanaut uh, case profile, right? They have to uh, 
kind of shape the stones uh, in, in different shapes and facets to kind of fit it into the case, but it's incredible. And I know you love a rainbow. Yeah, you know, I'm going to try it on because, again, I, I don't consider these to be women's watches. Uh, you know, uh, I, I consider them to just be like sort of mid-sized gem yeah. set masterpieces. And uh, just and as an example. the graduation of the colors, it's just perfect. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, like the color matching for also both the, um, the sapphire um, indexes as well that follow the tonality of the, the right. bezel is incredible. Um, the beautiful decoration on this mother of pearl is lovely as well. And then you've got an automatic chronograph movement inside of it. Mm -hmm. um, and the rate strap, I think incidentally, it's the same uh, strap that's been used on the pieces that were released for the Grand Exhibition in Singapore. Precisely. Some time back. You know, I guess, you know, we were talking about this earlier as well. One of the nice things about having this uh, vertical clutch chronograph movement in here also is that you can keep it on pretty much all day long. Yep. Um, vertical clutches never lose amplitude uh, for the, the base caliber, even mm -hmm. if they're on all the time. And so there you go. Incredibly practical watch. I think I'm showing to you that it can easily be worn by a man. I, I believe the size is 39.9, yeah. right? Which is, you know, it's a perfectly fine size as yeah. well. But even say you're not a huge fan of red or say that red is nice for special occasions, fret not because the watch comes with three straps. It also oh, comes yeah. with a base strap and a white strap so you can kind of adjust it according to your mood so uh, thank you guys very much for joining us jeremiah thank you for your time thanks Willie. and paddock you killed it cheers bye